Hi everybody, this is Dan Stolbarger and welcome to our midweek Middle East update that Holy Ground Explorations makes available and you can check it out at our uh, website holygroundexplorations.com go there click the blog button and you'll find the link for the YouTube as well and this is very important as well as the PDF PowerPoint because we try to keep these uh, weekly presentations shorter and I always have too much material and also there are pictures that accentuate um, what the report is presenting and as you know all of these uh, reports are coming really from an Israeli perspective from Israeli news journals friends from Israel etc but this is the week of September 21st and um, we're excited because uh, and within less than a week now we'll be in Israel and our, uh, for probably the next four weeks these reports will be coming from Israel itself. One announcement, please check this out. We have a school of discipleship that's coming up. Uh, we call it Selah and it's February 11th through March 2nd. It's a three-week time. Uh, we limit it to only 12 people so if you'd like more information or you know anybody that would be interested in sort of just um, slowing down and soaking in the sights and having some specific God time. Uh, we study the Word of God in the morning. We go through the book of Psalms in the evening. I teach from one of the Gospels. There is credit available if you want university credit through Calvary Chapel University. So you can check all that out as well. It's on our website. So. This week, headlines, what's going on in the Middle East, what's going on specifically with Israel. Things are heating up, especially in regards to the Temple Mount and a rising amount of violence. Um, on Sunday, a report was given that on an Israeli website that recorded 23 different rock-throwing attacks. Um, the official... Palestinian Authority promotes rock throwing, sacrificing oneself for the Alaska Mosque. The PA tells its people that throwing rocks is permitted under international law and warns that harsher punishment for rock throwers uh, if they, if Israel, Netanyahu has come out and said, you know what, anybody that hurts us will hurt them. Rock throwers, these are just different types of weapons we're going to act with force against them. Palestinians are saying, well, we'll use guns then. So, as I said before, things seem to be heating up. In regards to the lost battle of the Iranian treaty, senators have failed to uh, reach the threshold for a measure to keep all the sanctions in place in Iran. Uh, they were hoping that they could pass this and... Um, make Iran recognize Israel and to release uh, imprisoned Americans, etc. But no, that will not happen. They didn't get the numbers that they had needed. You know, reports tell us that a clear majority of Americans, over 60 percent, believe that Iran will ultimately violate the terms of this agreement. The poll also found that uh, there were 59% of Americans that have that disapprove of how Obama has handled this relationship with, with Iran. But with all the chatter, with all the noise, this has passed. And the issue now is the implementation and the doling out of the billions of dollars and we're wondering where that will go. Will it embolden Hamas and Hezbollah? Uh, we must stay tuned for all of that. Coming up, I'm interested in this. Iran's president, Hassan Rouhani, has tried to reassure a skeptical American public that when crowds in Tehran chant death to America, they don't mean it personally. And I guess 60 Minutes is actually going to do a report on this. Once again, 
it's it's the craziness of this situation. You know, we're we're shouting death to America, but we really don't mean it. Give me a break. Well, um, once again, we have rockets falling in the Gaza. Isra Israel has responded to these uh, three separate um, rocket attacks. And, uh, you know, it it's, seems to be that it's going to start up all over again after a month of quiet. Um, we're starting to see this drizzle of rocket fire into the Gaza. Uh, one of the frightening things, I shouldn't use the word frightening, one of the concerning things, I would say, is that reports now indicate that most Palestinians no longer support a negotiated two-state solution. A recent poll finds that 51%, over half of the Palestinians, uh, believe that the only way to establish an independent Palestinian state that will be next to Israel, that will have East Jerusalem as its capital, will have to be done uh, through armed action and so we're starting to hear talk about what's re being referred to as the third intifada um, again as i've already said please go to the website get the pdf uh, read all the different types of headlines that i've included there um, the one thing that i want to make sure that we uh, focus in on uh, for this week is the violence uh, regarding the temple mount um, you know, it, it's been said, and I think it's absolutely true, that when you're dealing with the end times, the end of days, you need to focus on Jerusalem. It really is the crosshairs of what the enemy wants to destroy. And, um, and I think you can even focus in, when you say Jerusalem, I think you can even focus in even more to the hottest spot where the crosshairs will be most clearly focused is the Temple Mount. And there doesn't have to be any truth involved in this. Whenever there's uh, comments or whenever the um, Abbas or the PA or Hamas, whenever they want to really kind of crank up the tension, all they have to say is Israel's threatening the Alaska Mosque. Like I said, please don't think there has to be any truth to this. It just has to be said. And that's what's taking place right now. That's behind all the rock throwing. And so here's the quote from Abbas. We won't allow Jews filthy feet on our holy site. The PA, he goes on to say, Jews are filth. They desecrate. They defile Jerusalem. We bless every drop of blood that has been spilled for Jerusalem blood spilled for Allah. Every martyr will reach paradise. Everyone wounded will be rewarded by Allah. And he goes on, and as you know, last week we reported about the flags that will be raised at the UN, one being the Vatican. These are non-UN members, and the other by something like 117 to 8 or whatever, we will find that there will be a Palestinian flag raised at the UN as well. A boss goes on with rattling the sabers and cranking up the tension about the Temple Mount. He says that he would insist that a future Palestinian state would include East Jerusalem as its capital. We're not content with our flag flying over just the United Nations. We want the Palestinian flag to fly over the capital, the proposed capital of the Palestinian state, that being East Jerusalem. Stay tuned, my friends. This is the war that's on the horizon. The battle has been lost about the Iranian deal. The war to come is going to deal with Jerusalem as well as the, quote, so-called two-state solution. Um, in our PDF, you can read about Jordan, what they have to say, um, as kind of caretakers of the holy sites. Interestingly, that King Abdullah II has made this statement that they're going to make efforts to halt the Israeli aggression. 
Uh, he makes no mention of Jewish rights whatsoever. He uh, reiterates Jordan's support for the Palestinian people, their just cause, etc., etc. And then, of course, there's a report on the Intifada that I mentioned, the rising of the third Intifada. Um, quote of the week. I thought I'd just give you this since we're talking about the Temple Mount. This is from an Israeli, a Zionist. So keep that in mind. Again, I'm giving you perspectives from Israel. So the quote of the week reads, Alaska is ours, and so is the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. They, the Jews, have no right to desecrate them with their filthy feet. We won't allow them to do so. We will do whatever we can to defend Jerusalem. There will be no Palestinian state without Jerusalem. We are in Jerusalem. We will stay in it to defend our Islamic and Christian holy sites. Thank you. We're not going to leave our country. Each drop of blood that was spilled in Jerusalem is pure blood as long as it's for the sake of Allah. Every shaheed or martyr will be in heaven and every wounded people person will be rewarded by Allah's will. Again, this was all from Abbas. And so now, the comment. Who is this guy? He sounds like Osama bin Laden or he sounds like he's the leader of ISIS. Hear the word of the Lord, Abbas. Thus says the Lord, I will return to Zion. I will dwell in the midst of my holy mountain, Jerusalem. And then Jerusalem will be called the city of truth. Zechariah 8.3. And he goes on to say, Palestine is Jewish land. Israel must realize that our enemies are not interested in peace. Only by removing enemies from the Jewish land will peace come to Eretz Israel. And so, as you can see, on one side we have the tensions being cranked up over the holy site, the Temple Mount, and on the other side we see the Zionists, the Israelis saying, okay, it's, it's on. And this is what's happening in the world today. Jerusalem is a cup of trembling for all the nations. Well, we'll wrap up with a couple more. Um, <laughs> you you got to laugh. You know, part of this Iranian deal is that Iran is promising to self-police themselves. And so uh, this report just came out. The International Atomic Energy Agency is sticking to its secret agreement with Iran which allows it to monitor its own nuclear program. Iran said on Monday that it's provided samples to the UN nuclear agency collected by its own experts at the Parchin military site where Western nations suspect that it's worked on detonators for nuclear weapons. The transfer came after a day after you. Y Yukaya Amano, the head of the IAEA. He was taken on a ceremonial tour of the military site and appeared to be, which appears to be part of this confidential draft agreement with the agency that of course allows Iran to gather its own samples. So they, they had this ceremony and they presented him with a, a soil sample. <laughs> this is just crazy self-policing. As you know, self, you know, in the past, such sampling is usually done by a third party. But I guess we should trust them, right? Well, uh, one on a much sadder note, nothing really to laugh about here. Uh, I've always talked about the danger or the, the real danger, the real opposition to any real kind of change in the Middle East really has to do with the brainwashing of children. And uh, Hamas TV, uh, they're interviewing kids, I mean seven-year-olds, five to seven-year-olds. Hamas is continuing to use its media to educate young children to carry out jihad against Jews. The Hamas-owned Alaska TV channel, which shows young children dressed in military fatigues, ask what they want to be when they grow up. And one of the kids said that they wanted to be an engineer. And then when they were asked why, 
they went on to say, so I can blow up the Jews. It makes international anti-Semites very happy, I'm sure, to see these reports, as well as all the funds, the monies, that are pouring into these organizations from Iran. Well, last thing, uh, I'll let you read for yourself. You know, we do have an ally in the Middle East. It's the only democracy in the Middle East. We've stood with this country from its inception uh, or its rebirth in 1948. You know it. It's Israel. And um, I was really touched to see this uh, memorial and it's called Israel Remembers, the 9-11 Living Memorial Plaza that commemorates the victims who died in the September 11, 2001 terror attack is made partially from the steel that's taken from the wreckage of the Twin Towers. And it's a memorial in Israel. It's the only memorial outside of the United States that includes the names of all who have perished in those attacks. That's our ally, my friends. Israel remembers our losses. The people that we're siding with right now, there's no memorial. There's just chanting. And what is that chanting? Can you hear it? Death to America. Death to America. Death to America. Are we insane? These are the times in which we're living. This is the report for this week. And uh, again, we would appreciate your prayers. We're taking about 12 people, 12 of us will be over in the land and um, looking forward to uh, seeing the sights, hearing the Lord, being with people. And then the second part of the tour, the extension is to, um, it's kind of prophecy yet to come to pass, which will take us into Petra and we'll see with our own eyes a refuge that God has already set up for the remnant that will flee during the tribulation period. I don't know about you, but I think that the end times or the end of days has already started. So keep us in your prayers, and as I said, next report will come to you from Israel. Shalom.